Greetings, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Australopithecus and the Organ. Okay, so today is our fifth installment of the show, and I think it's going to be a good one. I think we've got a lot of steam in our tank today, and uh, things are going to run a little bit more smoothly than maybe uh, they've been running. We've got a great song selection today, and of course, our organ, our harmonium, is uh, left unfettered to, uh, to really sing to us all this beautiful, beautiful Sunday evening. <laughs> or whatever evening this, this comes out. I hope you watch it on a Sunday. Because it sure has been a Sunday over here in this trailer of mine, of ours. Uh, yeah, uh, a lot of things going on. A lot of good things, I think. Well, let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Let's find out what's what's being what's being played right before our ears and eyes. And want to venture a guess? That's right. Here we have one of Fox Johann Sebastian Bach's classic two-part inventions. This is my favorite, honestly. I mean, <laughs> I'm not gonna say that I play it perfectly, but the way that, see, a two-part invention, basically what that means is that there are two voices woven together, and nobody wove like Bach. Bach was the master of the weave, and for him, weaving two voices together, even if that sounds complicated, that was like, you know, the equivalent of, I don't know, I prob there's probably nothing that I can even equate it to that would be as easy for me as for Bach being a genius. Um, so two, two, two parts woven together, that's, that's uh, no big thing to this man. Um, he, would, he would obviously be much more famous for, for his fugues, which he wrote. Um, I don't even know how many of those, but those those are a four. You would call them maybe even a four-part invention if you, if you if you wanted to try to elaborate on them, uh, because he will will weave four parts together, and he even does that with ease. But I don't know. Those two-part inventions are, are a little easier to play. They're they're a lot of fun, and some of them are really beautiful. So I, 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 I'm glad I picked that one out, and uh, I got to share it with everybody, you know, that that means a lot to me, uh, because uh, I think uh, there's a lot of beauty in, in that era, honestly. It's overlooked uh, a lot. It's overlooked, for sure, uh, that we think of these Baroque, these Baroque uh, gentlemen, gentle folk. As, as being, uh, like, you know, totally, uh, just meticulous and, like, the, like, without, without, uh, feeling, but some of this music, I, I, I really think has just as much feeling as anything I've encountered, you know, today. It's, it's gorgeous. This isn't that, this is just me doing nothing, uh, but having fun. So, uh, I wasn't sure when the next one of these would be, but I think today is a very good day for it, because uh, something that I've been wanting to happen for a while has happened. Uh, we have actually two new, not one, two <laughs> new uh, contributors to the, the Australopithecus and the Organ comment section. So, let's just give a, a good, a 
imaginary round of applause to our our new contributors. Uh, and I have a very broad audience, obviously. People from all over the world watch this thing. So can you imagine my shock when it turned out that the first two people ever to comment on an Australopithecus and the organ video were both of my loving and supportive and enabling <laughs> parents. They keep me going and I love them for it. And and this is nice because they're they're really incredible people and very smart it seems. And so they had some some interesting things that they had thought about and wanted to see what my my thoughts would be. And so that's what we're gonna do today on this this program. We're gonna look at something from some other human being's brain, which I am grateful that it, it's not from my own, but I will be responding to it. Okay, so uh, my mother, my mother, uh, Laura, is quoted here. Since you are out in the desert with dark nights full of stars, I would love to hear your musings on how our ancestors gained wisdom and shared life philosophies based on what they saw in the skies. I love that question. Um, and I think, uh, I think it's something that, that everybody has probably thought about when they looked into the skies, you know, because we all see the same sky generation after generation. Uh, I mean, I guess if you think about it, people in different hemispheres, right, get different, different skies, but I mean, we see the same constellations, I think, just at different parts of the year. Uh, so we all see the same stars, just different orientations. We all see the same same sights, and it connects us, right? Uh, and I, I do wonder about how we look at the stars, we look into the sky, and I mean, it's the same sky, but but we've changed so much that, you know, it reminds me of that, that saying about, uh, you know, you can never stand in the same river twice, but you can never look into the same sky twice, because even something as seemingly static as, as the night sky changes with our, with our own lens. Um, and so something that, that used to bring a sense of understanding to our world, right? We used to, ancient humans, or our ancestors, I think they, 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 they felt... Guys, you sleepy child, yeah, they, they're dreaming of your eyes. They felt some sort of sense of security in the sky, where, where it, 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 it meant that there was some sort of greater design at play, that we were part of something that, that was, that was written right there in the stars. Uh, and so we would, we would look at them and, and, and we would, we would, we would, we would assign meaning to them. Um, we would see battles and love stories, you know, romances and all kinds of uh, adventures that we would, we would connect the stars to one another. Um, I don't know, I think it gave us a sense of belonging and uh, maybe that's something that we lack a little bit today. But we just know 
different things. I wanted to say we know more, <laughs> but I don't know that that's true. But now when I look at a star, you know what I think? I think somewhere billions and billions of miles away. Huh? Hop, 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 is I like to hop around the town. Hop, hop, hop. Is a star, is a big ball of gas exploding in fantastic ways, and its light is traveling. Hop, 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 around the town. I'd like to hop around the town. Its light is traveling from millions of years ago to pierce our retinas, and that's pretty cool, but it's new. That's not what you people used to think. So, our perspectives have changed. But, I mean, maybe our takeaways are the same. <laughs> the stars do tell a story. Uh, just not a story of us. A story of something much bigger. Yeah. So... Next time you're <laughs> gazing up into the sky, I, I don't think that there has to be too much thought into, into that sort of that sort of a thing. Just enjoy it because uh, it is beautiful. And we've done it all our all our human history. Uh, so it's it's a part of us. It's a part of our journey to look into the skies. Okay. Well, I hope that was what Laura, my, my dear mother, was looking for in this entry, because I'm going to move on now to uh, comment, commenter number two, uh, my, uh, my dear father, ever dear father, Philip, Philip, who, who in response to, to my last video, where I had mentioned how life uh, can feel like a big like a eyes, like a my monster. eyes, your eyes are mine today. Uh, he writes the following. Let's see, uh, I used to love the classic roller coasters. They keep making them more and more crazy with loops and twists as more of a challenge and status thing rather than just fun. Maybe a reflection on our society. I would love to hear your thoughts on our relationships with our pets. Okay, a little bit of a curveball, but uh, you know, that's what we are here to, uh, to figure out. And I've had a lot of that on my mind as of late because, uh, well, I have a pet and, uh, I've been fortunate enough to kind of meet a lot of different people with a lot of different perspectives on their pets, uh, and our relationships with our pets is actually pretty complicated. All over the world, um, and throughout history, you know, I, th I think it's a weird thing that is, is also overlooked, that we, we have some, it's, it's really, uh, pets kind of fill a part of us, uh, and I don't think that can really be explained, uh, but we, we develop these really deep bonds with members of an entirely different species. Uh, and, I mean, that's, that's beautiful, and I think it says a lot about how we're all so much a part of the same thing. I theme. really should be sailing right now. <laughs> yeah, you gotta get on. I really road. should be sailing right now. 
be off on the coast. They were learning how to say, I really should be making the most of my time. So, I think more than a member, more than a member of the family, my pet is like a very impressive thing that even the word seems to like diminish. Um, because I mean, I don't, I don't want to, I don't even want to look up the dictionary definition. But a pet seems to, it seems to, uh, like, implicate, uh, like, subservience or something. But I don't see my pet, my rabbit, my good friend, <laughs> and I, I use the possessive my, but believe me, I'm his just as much as he is mine, you know? There's no, no real ownership here. Uh, I see him as a friend. I've seen all of my 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 pets as my friends. Uh, whether they feel the same or not, I'll, I guess I'll never really know. But I I, I, I want to believe that's true. And so the thing that's so bizarre is that the way that we acquire pets, I think kind of changes our philosophy on them, where what you do when you want a pet is you just go out and you get one. Um, it's not much more than that. It's a simple monetary transaction. There's no, you know, it's not like uh, that James Cameron film. Uh, Uzi, what's it, uh, <laughs> Avatar, where, where, where you go and you have to braid your, your braid into the braid of another braid, um, you just go and you pay someone and they give you your pet and you would, you would, just as if you were buying a, you know, a couch or a, a new desk. So, um, that really is a strange thing. Uh, you know, in terms of buying a loved one. <laughs> I didn't flush this out fully before I started this, I'm not gonna lie, but, uh, it's conflicting. Uh, but... I feel very strongly that uh, it's a role that really is an ingrained part of the human experience, developing these bonds with, with you know, members of other species. And it doesn't even have to be to a pet, quote unquote, or an animal. It can be to a tree, to a forest. To, to just to something different, something that we can't explain. Here comes that two-part invention again. Yeah, I believe this was written sometime in the 1600s. It's pretty. Pretty impressive, pretty enduring piece of music. Um, I wonder how long, how much longer it will be played for. Probably much longer, probably long after I'm gone and after. Yeah, there's some element of transcendence there that you can't touch music. Music can touch you, <laughs> and yeah, this Johan guy certainly knew that, and I, I doubt he could believe that in the year 2022, 
equivalent for television screen, uh, uh, transmitting windows, uh, and into their, into their, into their ears and eyes, uh, I think you would have lost him, that scruffy bearded fellow. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess that's, that's that. That's how the podcast, the webcast, the webertainment Nah, I haven't flushed out a good name for this. But the the video, the video has kind of run its course. Um, oh, we've had a good time, I think. Um, and I, 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 I'm really grateful for for these these questions, you know, for the for these comments. Uh, they made things a little easier for me, I think. And so I'm excited to do more with this format, because. Uh, I mean, this is usually the time where I'm going to tell a story or something, but I'm living, I'm living out here in Tucson. I mean, it's beautiful. Uh, but I, I haven't, I haven't really, uh, you know, been in, 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 in much, uh, extreme, exciting, uh, environments. It's been kind of just sweet out here, so... <laughs> If anyone's got something that's been on their mind, uh, I think it'd make a good topic. <laughs> or maybe I, I could just figure something out again. Uh, but this was nice, and I'm glad that I could I could give it a try. Uh, so, to, to just a recap, uh, uh, Bach is good, the night sky is good, and pets are good, but all in moderation. Let's let's just remember that. Don't want to hear about someone ODing on uh, Johann Sebastian, and th then then you coming after me. You know, I I I, I didn't I didn't want that. <laughs> so here we are in the trailer with our thoughts and there will be more there will be more to come but for the time being I'll play us out